Here's the truth you need to pack up and take home with you. A man of God helps you depend on God, not on him. A man of greed wants you to depend on him so he can extract money from you. A lot of so-called prophets today charge people money for ministry. The more you pay, the more they pray. Today, many churches and prayer camps charge money for what they call consultation. If you give $50, you get a prayer. If you give $100, they will lay hands on you and anoint you. If you give $500, they'll fast for you. And if you give $1,000, they will prophesy and see a vision for you. It seemed like a match made in heaven. The couple first met on March 27th, 2019 on Match.com, a dating website. Then later that same day, they met in person. The lonely woman was so desperate for love, she fell for the handsome young man named John Martin Hill. He had charm and good looks. Plus, he told the lady he was a millionaire. His fancy clothes and expensive car all seemed to support his claims. And so just one week after hooking up on a dating app, the couple was married. They started planning life together and talked about buying their dream home. In fact, things seemed so good that the woman gave John Martin Hill over 80,000 U.S. dollars of her own money to put down as a deposit on the home they wanted to buy. And then John Martin Hill disappeared. After giving him $80,000 to help pay for their dream home, the woman stopped hearing from Hill. No calls, no texts, no nothing. He took her money and ran. In May 2019, the police finally caught up with John Martin Hill. They arrested him at his house in another city where he was living with another woman and their child. Upon investigation, the police discovered that John Martin Hill was wanted in five different cities, all for duping lonely women out of their money. It seems that the handsome young Mr. Hill had left a trail of broken hearts and empty bank accounts all across the United States. Have you ever been betrayed? Have you ever been duped into trusting someone who seemed good but wasn't really who they seemed to be? The sad truth is, whenever we have a need in our lives, we become susceptible to being defrauded. If you're desperate for love, you can easily be tricked by a con man like John Martin Hill. If you're desperate for money, you may fall prey to a fake investment. And if you're desperate for the supernatural power of God, you can become the victim of a fake man of God. The hunger in all of us to experience God's presence can lead us to put our hope in people and things that deceive us. They promise the supernatural power of God, but in reality, they only offer us superstition. It's a terrible thing to be duped in love, but it's even worse to be duped in your faith. It's a terrible thing to be deceived and lose your money, but it's even worse to be deceived and lose your soul. Yet the fact is, all over the world today, millions of people are being deceived spiritually by the counterfeit experiences offered by fake men of God. Millions of people in thousands of churches are seeking miracles, signs, and wonders. But instead of receiving the supernatural, they end up with superstition. Instead of receiving help from a man of God, they end up losing money to a man of greed. That's why today we're starting a new sermon series titled Supernatural or Superstition. Over the next few weeks, we're going to discover how to avoid the deception that is so common in the church today. We're going to learn how to experience the true supernatural presence of God in our own lives so that we can share it with others. But before we learn more, let us bow our heads and pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, we pray that your light will shine in our hearts and minds today. We submit to you and bind every lying voice of the devil that would come to deceive or disturb or distract us. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, I loose the power of the Holy Spirit to lead us into the truth that we might avoid deception and walk on the path 
of righteousness. We thank you by faith in Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. I invite you to take a moment. Join your faith with mine right now. Put your hand on your chest and pray after me. Lord Jesus, speak to my heart. Change my life. Manifest your glory in me. In Jesus' name, Amen and amen. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Truth For Today. I'm so glad you've joined me as we come in the presence of God to study his word together. I'm confident that the Lord is doing a great work in your life as we follow his path of truth. Yet even as God is at work in us, we know that the devil is also at work against us. Anytime you get serious in your walk with Jesus, you're bound to face opposition. The enemy is working overtime because he knows his time is short. He knows we are growing in our faith and he is going all out to stop us. But the good news is we are victorious in Christ. We are more than conquerors. We're on the winning side. We know the end of the story and we know that God and his people win. If you believe it, say amen. That's why it's so important that all of us understand the truth and prepare ourselves against the enemy's deceptions. For if we do not prepare ourselves to overcome the lies of the enemy, then we're in danger of being deceived. And sadly, the evidence of deception in the church is all around us today. Many are falling away from the truth. Not too long ago, a high-profile pastor in the U.S. renounced his faith and said, I am no longer a Christian. A worship songwriter from a big church in Australia came out publicly and said, I'm not sure about Christianity. His faith is on shaky ground. Almost every week, there's a news report about a pastor or a prophet who says or does something that brings shame to the name of Jesus. And while this is sad, we should not be surprised, for Jesus himself said it would happen. In fact, that's what Jesus tells us in our scripture text for today. You'll find our text for today on your sermon notes, which you can download for free from my website and my social media sites. I invite you to take out your sermon notes now, and let's all read together the words of Jesus in Matthew 24, 3 to 5. Are you ready? Here we go. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many. May the Lord bless the reading of his word to your heart in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Listen carefully to what Jesus tells us in these verses. In the end of time, many will come as false prophets. Somebody say many. And many will be deceived. But the good news is this. Jesus gives us this teaching so that we will escape the deception of the end times. So let's take a closer look at his words and see the three steps you can take to avoid deception. Here's your first step to avoid deception. Understand the danger of of deception. We begin avoiding deception when we realize how dangerous it is. Listen to verses 3 and 4 in our text. The disciples asked Jesus, what will be the sign? Everybody say the sign. What will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. So here's the truth you need to pack up and take home with you today. The number one sign of the end times is religious deception. Before Jesus talked about the earthquakes that would come, before he talked about famine and war, the first thing Jesus said about the end times is beware of deception. And Jesus goes on to tell us this is not a minor problem. This is not a side note in history. This is a major event that will be greater than any physical event of the end time. Jesus doesn't just talk about general deception. He specifically states the type of deception in the end. It is spiritual deception. Listen to his words. Many will come in my name, Jesus said. They will try to deceive you, my followers. And here's what makes this sign of the end time more frightening than any other. In these end times, the spirit of deception is so strong and so powerful, if possible, even the very followers of Jesus would be deceived. 
If you and I are not careful, if we're not prayerful, if we're not on guard and diligent in our faith, even good Christians will be deceived. Even people who love God will miss the truth. And already this spiritual deception has been released upon the earth. There's a great wave of error running through churches today. It's destroying pastors and ruining churches. It's causing men to backslide and making the gospel lose power. It's making a mockery of the truth and making men lose their faith. It's causing good Christians to turn from the truth and fall into sin. And the fact is Jesus clearly tells us it will affect Many, many false prophets will come. Many men will be deceived. And friend, you need to know today that the greatest challenge for us as Christians in the end times is not persecution. It's not economic collapse or uncertainty in government. The greatest challenge we face today in the church is spiritual deception. And the vehicle of this religious deception is false prophets. Men and women who claim to speak for God, but they do not. It's not a secret that prophets are everywhere today. And Jesus warned us many would be false. So why don't we wake up and recognize the error right in the church? Reminds me of a young Bible college student who was excited when he was invited to preach his first sermon, believing that it was more spiritual to preach without any notes. He did not write anything on paper. He was confident of his success until he got up in front of the congregation and his mind went blank. He couldn't remember his text or his topic, and he stood staring out at the people in the church. He knew he had to do something quickly, so he decided to try to jar his memory by using positive confession. With a dramatic flair, he lifted his hand in the air and declared boldly, It's coming! And he pounded his fist on the pulpit for emphasis. Unfortunately, nothing happened. His sermon didn't come to mind. He still couldn't remember his message. So with a little more force, he shouted a second time, It's coming! And he pounded the pulpit even harder. The people sat in awe watching him, but still nothing came to him. Desperate, he decided one more time to name it and claim it, to blab it and grab it. So he yelled louder, It's coming! And he pounded the pulpit with a big whack. Well, as he did, a piece of the pulpit broke off and flew across the front of the church. Much to the young man's dismay, the piece of pulpit struck an old woman in the front row of the church. Hey! Mortified, the young man rushed down from the platform to where the woman was sitting and apologized profusely. Oh, mama, I'm sorry. That's all right, son, she said. It's not your fault. I should have moved. After all, you warned me three times It was coming. Jesus has warned us over and over that there will be false prophets. He's told us over and over there will be an all-out effort to deceive us. We must be aware. We must be alert because deception is coming your way. And the consequences of this deception are dire. In verses 24 and 25, Jesus said, False messiahs and false prophets will rise up and perform great signs and wonders so as to deceive, if possible, even God's chosen ones. See, I have warned you about this ahead of time. So if possible, this deception will even come and try to remove you from the kingdom of God. And Jesus tells us what to do. Here's what you should do. Take heed. Be careful. Be alert. He's warned you today so that you can avoid deception. And here's what you need to know to become deception-proof. You don't avoid deception by being a good person. You don't avoid deception by believing in God. You won't avoid deception by paying tithes. Jesus said, take heed. In other words, be careful, discern. Don't believe everything you hear or see from someone claiming to be a man of God. Watch out. Today... Many in the church are not being careful enough. We're so busy seeking a supernatural experience that we become superficial. We're not discerning about the men and women we listen to and follow. And Jesus tells us plainly that the deception comes through someone. Deception comes through a person. Jesus said if you don't take heed, someone will deceive you. 
The error doesn't come from a thing, it comes from a person. Deception doesn't come from Satan alone, it comes from Satan working through someone. And the deception of today in the church is a deception coming through false messiahs, false prophets, false brethren, false pastors and teachers, false apostles. And here's what most of us fail to understand. The method these false prophets use to deceive people is miracles. For Jesus said, false messiahs and false prophets will rise up and perform great signs and wonders so as to deceive. Now, be sure you understand, I'm not against miracles, signs, and wonders. I am for miracles. I believe in signs and wonders. I am for prophecy. I'm for healing and deliverance and all the good gifts God still gives to his people today. But those same signs and wonders that we all desire from God can be used to open people to deception when they come from false prophets. When the enemy counterfeits the supernatural, he attracts people to himself. That's why Revelation 13, 13 to 14 says, the beast performed great and miraculous signs. Because of the signs, he deceived the inhabitants of the earth. See, the fact is, if you're seeking a spiritual experience outside the word of God, you may indeed get a spiritual experience. You may get a supernatural miracle. You may get a prophecy that comes to pass. The fact is, there are lying signs and wonders that come from Satan. You may get a miracle or a healing or money or a breakthrough or a wife or a husband or children. But if you go outside God's word to get your miracle, then your miracle is coming from Satan. When you seek a spiritual experience outside the word of God, you always get bondage. You cannot escape it. You cannot use the devil to get something you desire and then turn around and be free from the devil. There's a price to pay, and mark my words, you will pay the price. You can't sleep with the devil and get up and go free. You can't fly Satan's airline and expect Jesus to pick you up at the airport. And if all you're after is a spiritual experience, then there are thousands and thousands of false prophets, of witches and wizards, of demonically inspired pastors, and they will get you a spiritual experience. That's the lesson we can learn from King Saul and the witch at Endor found in 1 Samuel 28. In this chapter, we find that King Saul was in trouble. He was surrounded by enemy armies. He'd backslidden and lost his peace. He was tormented inside and out. But rather than seeking the supernatural presence of God, he resorted to superstition. He thought if he could talk to the dead prophet Samuel, he would be able to get help. So Saul went to a witch in the town of Endor and asked her to call up the departed spirit of Samuel the prophet. And the amazing thing is, this witch did just that. The spirit of Samuel the prophet, the true man of God, the great man, came up out of the grave and talked to Saul. Saul got what he wanted. He got a spiritual experience. It was greater than any other spiritual experience anyone had in his day. But it did not save his life. It did not save his family. He got a spiritual miracle, and he went to hell with his miracle. He died, and is in hell today, and his kingdom was taken from him. If you are so desperate for a miracle that you will follow the devil to get a miracle, then know today that God has rejected you. You may get your miracle, but you'll get hellfire too. The fact is, the devil doesn't mind if you have a spiritual experience, as long as he's the one giving it to you. He wants to keep you in bondage, so he sends false prophets to prophesy and lying pastors to come and deceive you and trick you and trap you. So don't seek the miracle. Seek Jesus, the miracle worker. Do not be deceived. You have to understand the danger of deception. For 2 Corinthians 11 says, these people are false apostles. They are deceitful workers who disguise themselves as apostles of Christ. But I'm not surprised. Even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no wonder that his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. In the end, they will get the punishment their wicked deeds deserve. 
The Bible says the devil can transform himself into an angel of light. There are a lot of people who wear clerical collars who are inspired by Satan. They are devils. They are demon-possessed, and they're on their way to hell. But they've transformed themselves into angels of light for the purpose of deceiving you and ensnaring you. So how can we know the difference? Well, that's our second step to avoid deception. Discern the difference between the true and the false. The danger of deception requires that you discern the difference between the true and the false. You can't just hope to avoid deception. You cannot rely upon other people to protect you. You yourself must take heed. You must discern. You must be aware. That's why the Bible says in 1 John 4, 1, Dear friends, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. You must test them. Tell your neighbor, test them. You must test them to see if the spirit they have comes from God. For there are many false prophets in the world. Just say this after me. You must test them. Who is the them that we must test? We must test everyone and anyone who claims to speak by God's spirit. In other words, you have to test every man of God. And you can test every man of God because the Bible tells us how. There are three tests that must be in the life of every man of God or woman of God in order to mark their ministry as genuine. And here's the first test to know a true man of God. You will know them by their fruit. In Matthew 7, 15, Jesus said, watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit, you will recognize them. Notice that Jesus doesn't comment on their speech. He talks about their lifestyle. He doesn't condemn their words. He talks about their motives and their actions. The great deception in the last days is not just wrong words or wrong doctrine. It's also a wrong lifestyle. And here's the problem we make today. We think if a prophet speaks words that come to pass, well, then it means he's a true man of God. We think if a pastor performs miracles, signs, and wonders, that he must be operating in God's supernatural power. But the fact is, you can speak prophetic words that come to pass and still be a false prophet. You can perform miracles, signs, and wonders and still not operate in God's power. Because this is so important, let me emphasize it and say it again. Deception is not just wrong words. It's also a wrong lifestyle. A false prophet may have the right words and even predict things correctly, but if he has a wrong life, he is a false prophet. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 7, 21 to 23, not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many, somebody say many, many will come and say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name. We cast out demons in your name. We perform many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. Think about these false prophets. They used the name of Jesus. They prophesied. They cast out devils. They performed many miracles. Jesus did not deny that they did all those things. He did not stop them from boasting about their power on earth. But he clearly told them that their power did not come from him. He condemns them for breaking God's laws. They prophesied, but were full of sin. They performed miracles, but were full of greed. They cast out Satan, but Satan was not cast out of them. So understand today that miracle signs and wonders are not a guarantee that a man is a true man of God. The Bible says even the Antichrist will perform miracles, signs, and wonders. If you're chasing miracle signs and wonders and you want a big crowd, be careful. You will end up following the Antichrist. For the whole world will follow him, and he'll perform miracles, but he's an agent of Satan. 
You must test a man, not only by his miracles and his prophecies, but also by the lifestyle he lives. If a man prophesies something and that prophecy comes to pass, that still doesn't make him a true prophet. If he speaks a word that comes to pass but does not live a godly life, you must still reject him. He's a false prophet. That's why Deuteronomy 13, 1-4 says this. Suppose there are prophets among you, or those who dream dreams about the future, and they promise you signs or miracles, and the predicted signs or miracles occur. So they did something, they prophesied something, and it happened. If they then say, come, let us worship other gods, gods you've not known before, do not listen to them. The Lord your God is testing you to see if you truly love him with all your heart and soul. Serve only the Lord your God and fear him alone. Obey his commands, listen to his voice, and cling to him. In other words, even if a man prophesies correctly, if he doesn't live in obedience to God, if he doesn't draw you closer to Jesus, he's a false prophet. Just because someone can see into the spiritual world doesn't mean he's sent from Jesus. The devil and his demons see more than you. That doesn't mean we should follow him. The reason the devil can tell you where your mobile phone went missing is because he's working with that false prophet who stole it. The reason he can tell you who cursed your child is because he's an agent of the devil that brought the curse. And the Bible says that God is testing us. When we hear accurate prophecies from an unholy man, it's a test. God is testing you to see if you will remain faithful to him no matter what. Friend, the fact is, I would rather suffer with a need in my life but be found faithful to my God than have a million miracles and go to hell with my miracles. We all need miracles, but we need to trust in Jesus, not in man. Don't let your need drive you to ungodly conduct. A man of God will never be a man of greed. So here are some vital questions you need to ask to test the ministry of a man of God. Is he living in adultery? Is he divorced and remarried? Is he always cursing people from the pulpit? Does he tell the truth? And that brings us to our second test. You will know them by their faithfulness to the word of God. We must cling to the word of God as never before. The only safeguard against deception is the word of God. If you see someone on TV and you like the way he talks and you like the way he dresses and you like the way he moves and you see him on TV and you think, this must be a man of God, then you are basing your faith in him on the wrong thing. God's word is the only source for our faith. If it's not in the Bible, it must not be in my life. Today, many, many things are being preached and practiced that are not in the Bible. Today, we have anointing for everything. We use anointing oil like a charm. There's anointing for healing and anointing for business, anointing for visa, anointing to go to the toilet. Hey! And to make matters worse, churches have started encouraging people to use deadly substance to get their miracle. A few years ago, Pastor Rabalago of the Mount Zion General Assembly in South Africa was spraying doom, super multi-insect killer, in people's faces to cure their sickness. Where is that in the Bible? Pastor Light Monyaki of the Grace Living Hope Ministries commanded his congregants to drink rat poison as a demonstration of the power of faith. Now... The police are investigating the deaths of five of his church members. They died shortly after visiting his deliverance service. Ask yourself, where is that in the Bible? For 2 Timothy 3 says, evildoers and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in the Holy Scriptures. Continue in the Word of God, which are able to make you wise for the salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. There can be no compromise with the truth. There are not two sides of God's truth. There is only one truth, the Lord Jesus Christ. And your protection from deception is clinging to God's word. Today, many Christians say, oh, I heard somewhere. Many say, I I heard a man of God say, but what does the Bible say? 
we must examine it and know the truth for ourselves. For the fact is you can make the Bible say almost anything you want to. If you pick verses and words out of context, you can twist the scripture to appear to say what it doesn't say. So here's the truth you need to pack up and take home with you. Text out of context is pretext. Here's an example of what I mean. If you take a Bible text out of context, you can get error. Look at Ephesians 4.28. Here the Bible says, anyone who has been stealing must steal. Is the Bible telling us to steal? No. That's only a portion of the total verse. The real verse says this. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer. Text out of context is pretext. There's a church here in Accra where I live that had a life group, and the life group leader was teaching his members that God is wicked. He was quoting Psalm 50, verse 16. To the wicked God, all the life group members believed that God was wicked. But here's what the verse actually says, Psalm 50, 16. To the wicked, God says, what right have you to declare my statutes or take my covenant in your mouth? Because text out of context is pretext. I'm really troubled about the fact that so many of us listen to people preaching on the radio without checking to see if they are faithful to God's word. You listen to some guy on the radio with a deep voice and you'll get excited and you accept it like gospel truth and you haven't even seen whether what he's saying is in the Bible. Anybody can preach on radio. You can just pay the fee and they give you the time. Anybody can claim to be a man of God on radio and tell you God said, God said. But you have to test it. You have to look into the word of God and see for yourself. You listen to a 30-second clip on Instagram and you like what you hear. You like the way the guy dressed, the way he moves. So you start following the guy and sharing his words. But once you get past the first 30 seconds, the guy is not preaching God's truth. He starts going off into error. And before you know it, he's filled your mind with deception. He's not a man of God. He's a man of greed. That's why Paul said in Galatians 1.8, even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let him be eternally condemned. Paul encourages us to test his own words with the truth of God's word. If the great apostle Paul can ask us to test his message, why can't we test the message of every pastor everywhere? Some pastors will get angry if you question something he said. He will act as if you're challenging him. He'll say, do not touch my anointed and do my prophets no harm. He may even begin to curse you and call down fire, fire from heaven. But a real man of God will not do that. I tell you today, you can check out anything I teach you. Go to the Bible and confirm it. Don't believe it because I said it. Believe it because it's in the Word of God. That's why we print sermon notes to give you the Word of God so you can test what I'm saying. So here's how you test a man of God. You know them by their fruit, number two. Know them by their faithfulness to the word of God. And number three, you know them by their focus on Jesus. Listen to this powerful verse in Revelation 19.10. Worship only God. For the essence of prophecy is to give a clear witness for Jesus. So ask yourself, does this prophecy lift up Jesus? Does this prophet lift up Jesus? Or is he only lifting up his own name and his own ministry? For God will not share his glory with anyone. You can't have it both ways. You can't glorify God and glorify yourself at the same time. Sadly, in our churches today, many believe that the essence of prophecy is to warn about disaster. In our churches today, we believe the essence of prophecy is to reveal witches and wizards. In our churches, we believe that prophecy comes to create excitement and news stories that will make the pasta rich and famous. This is wrong. Any true prophet has one job and one job alone, to lift up Jesus. Any true prophet will make people run to Jesus, not shake in fear. Any true prophet, speaking by the power of God, gives a clear witness to Jesus. I've seen some churches where they have a picture of the pastor at the altar. Are you worshiping Jesus or the pastor? It's one thing to use the picture of a pastor to advertise and invite people. It's completely different to put the pastor's picture at the altar. Hey, 
man worship has gotten out of control in our churches. There's a pastor in Tanzania who said, because I'm anointed, my feet cannot touch the ground while I'm preaching. So he stood on top of his members while he preached. What is that? Nonsense. The pride in pastors today is making God angry. Pastors tell their members, bow down, kneel down, touch my feet, stop it. Jesus and only Jesus must be glorified. We worship him and him alone. See, the reason why these fake pastors want you to worship them is because they want you to be dependent on them, not God. They want to draw you into an attachment to themselves so they can take your money and control your life. But your dependence is on God, not man. And that's our third step to avoid deception. Direct your dependence on God. Here's the truth you need to pack up and take home with you. A man of God helps you depend on God, not on him. A man of greed wants you to depend on him so he can extract money from you. A lot of so-called prophets today charge people money for ministry. The more you pay, the more they pray. Today, many churches and prayer camps charge money for what they call consultation. If you give $50, you get a prayer. If you give $100, they will lay hands on you and anoint you. If you give $500, they'll fast for you. And if you give $1,000, they will prophesy and see a vision for you. Nonsense. Anybody who charges you for prayer or ministry is in error. Mark my words. A day of judgment is coming on the false prophets and the fake pastors in this land. They tell you, buy this anointing oil, buy this holy water, buy this prayer cloth. Do not be deceived. Jesus never sold any miracle and neither did the apostles. We have to get back to the place today where we depend on Jesus and Jesus only. The cult of celebrity pastors must end. That's why the apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 3, 4 to 11, when one of you says, I'm a follower of Paul, and another says, I follow Apollos, aren't you acting just like people of the world? After all, who is Apollos? Who is Paul? We are only God's servants through whom you believe the good news. Each of us did the work the Lord gave us, and you are God's field. Because you are God's building, because of God's grace to me, I've laid the foundation like an expert builder. Now others are building on it. But whoever is building on this foundation must be very careful. For no one, no man, no prophet can lay other foundation, any foundation, other than the one we already have, Jesus Christ. And our job as pastors is to attach people to Jesus, not to us. God's will is to use men and women of God to help his people get closer to Jesus. We need men of God. We need teachers who teach the truth. We need pastors who pray for us and guide us to God. We need prophets who speak God's word to us and help us in the spiritual realm. But what we need more than anything is Jesus. And anyone who draws you away from Jesus is a fake pastor. Anyone who makes you rely on him more than on God is an agent of the enemy. He's drawing you away from God's destiny. There are some prophets today who say, we have to have midnight call, midnight call, midnight call. They want you attached to them so they can take your money. Hear the word of the Lord to you today from 1 Corinthians 3. So don't boast about following a particular human leader. For everything belongs to you, whether Paul or Apollos or Peter, or the world or life and death, or the present and the future. Everything belongs to you, and you belong to Christ, and Christ belongs to God. See, God has a plan for all of us. We are all called to belong to him. We're all called to hear his voice speaking to us. We're all called to pray and come into his presence. We are all called to be used by God, to be close to God, to be his instruments in his hands. For 1 Peter 2.9 teaches us, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you, that you, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. God is raising up a new generation of people to do his works, to speak his word, and to change this world. We need leaders who will lead us, but the revival of the end times will involve all of us. To win this generation, 
Every believer must get up and get involved. Don't depend on people. Depend on Jesus. Let God use you. Get into God's Word. Study for yourself. Get into your prayer closet and seek God for yourself. Get into the supernatural flow of the Spirit and begin to allow God to use you. Do not be deceived. Learn the difference between a man of God and a man of greed. Understand the danger of deception. Discern the difference between the true and the false. And direct your dependence on God. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us today. Deliver us from deception. Lord, there are many, many false prophets in our nation. Many false prophets in the world. They're on TV. They're on radio. They have big crowds. They drive big cars. But they're not coming from you. Deliver us from deception. Help us to realize today you've called every one of us to take heed, to discern, to be aware. Draw us back to you, Lord. Draw us into your word. Draw us into your presence that we might discern between men of God and men of greed. I commit your people to your hands now and I bless them in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining me today on Truth For Today. I trust that this message has been a blessing to you. I've got a lot more great content to share with you to build your faith and help you to soar. So be sure to follow me on all my social media platforms. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. When you do, click the notification bell so that you can get an alert when my new sermons drop. By God's grace, we're reaching people all over the world with truth for today. And the good news is, you can be a part of this outreach to glorify God and transform lives. When you sow into this ministry, you help us spread God's word to people everywhere. Join me in this ministry by hitting the donate button on my website. And of course, remember to share this message with your friends and your family. God richly bless you today. I'm praying for you and I look forward to seeing you next time on Truth For Today.